to brain friendly English communities online. I'm Sylvie Guinan and I'm an online English teacher, writer and blogger and I also network with teachers all over the world through social media and professional development online uh, through uh, hosting and presenting webinars. Today I'm going to speak to two very interesting professionals who are collaborating together from two diverse fields that you might not expect to complement each other. So we've got Theodora Papapapayatu, I, I, know okay. I think I said that wrong, Papapapayatu, okay, yep. and Theodora is an English language and German teacher and she's been teaching since 1992. She's very kinesthetic and she loves the gym and somehow her experience has enabled her to find creative ways to combine fitness with language teaching and that, that's what has fascinated me and I've been following her uh, fitness posts and educational posts on Facebook and she also inspired me to get into fitness in my own little way um, that's why I wanted to hold this interview and Nick is Theodore's fitness trainer okay so um, I will just share his professional description with you. He's a certified personal trainer from YMCA and the British Triathlon Association coach. He has over a decade of experience coaching individuals and teaching group exercise classes. He's an advanced Les Mills instructor. Through his company personal experience, his goal is to help people reach their maximum potential with safety in the fastest time possible. Um, okay, so that's a, a long and detailed description and we will let Nick tell us more. Okay, um, so as I said, I'm fascinated to see how the story will, will unfold between fitness, language and whole brain and whole body workouts. Okay, so um, my first question is for Theodora. Can you tell me how your fitness journey began and how its connection with language learning became a practical part of your experience? Well, my fitness journey started uh, about six, seven years ago when I started going to the gym. Until then, I had never been to a gym. I, had, uh, I hated the gym class at school and I was really overweight. Um, wow. Yeah, really. And so when I went there, uh, I found a really friendly atmosphere and uh, I liked all the classes there and uh, the rhythm and dancing and um, the energy that I got from the people. Uh, so it, uh, I got a bit stuck <laughs> at the gym. It was my second home and it still is. Uh, now, uh, what got me into combining the, the two? Well, actually, this happened when I met Nick. Uh, because at some point he had to take an exam to make a video uh, instructing in English and he needed people in his class to understand um, English uh, so I went and I got the idea, I said why not uh, use that, some of the exercises in the classroom or with my students to uh, practice movement verbs and body parts and that's how the idea uh, came. Okay, that's a brilliant idea. Um, there's so much we can say about that very soon. Um, Nick, can you describe how you started collaborating with Theodora? Maybe you can add uh, your perspective to this part. Well, it was uh, it was actually our love for uh, for fitness that that got us together. Uh, after the the video that I had to take, and uh, I saw Dora, and I knew that she was uh, she was an English teacher. Uh, we kind of like went from there. Uh, we discussed it a bit, a little bit further further on down the road, and I found myself collaborating with her in the um, in the aid project, where it was uh, it was a kinesthetic project. So uh, my part in there was to try and introduce some very basic movements uh, to the uh, to the audience and trying to use um, momentum uh, and movement vocabulary uh, to see how we can relate uh, movement and and learning um, after that um, 
we kind of like got got uh, closer together when we actually did some some personal training, and uh, and I think that really that really um, enforced the 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 idea and the project that uh, Dora has in uh, in her mind. He actually, I think that that exercise and learning they they, they go together. And I believe that if you if you get a person exercising, not in a uh, not in his high paces, but in a moderate way, then you can switch on the brain. And when the the brain is switched on, I think that's where Dora wants to um, il infiltrate, uh, if you want, uh, with her um, with her language learning. And and I think that 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 is a that that is a great barrier. Uh, that we can use to collaborate mm -hmm. between each other. Yes, that's absolutely amazing. Um, it's surprising how um, we've always had children sitting in class and not moving, and we we have never brought this into our work. So I think what both we are doing is something very exciting for the language teaching community, and and you know we can't wait to learn more about how you're going to go forward. So. Let me think. Um, next questions. Yes. So, what are your plans for taking this to the next level, uh, Theodora? Uh, as Nick said, we have already presented something uh, at the TESOL convention in Thessaloniki. It was uh, more like a collaborative project with another teacher uh, about the eight intelligences, uh, the Gardner's theory, and Nick had the kinesthetic part. Now, what we're going to do now? Uh, I have already uh, talked to some of the members of the TESOL Macedonia Trust, and we want to present a workshop combining uh, uh, fitness and movement and uh, language learning and uh, I don't know if we are going to present this uh, as a in December as a pre-Christmas event or maybe in the convention I haven't talked about it because it's summer and we also want to take this professionally I mean when we want when we show what we have in mind into the public uh, we offer our services we will be offering our services to schools and language schools and uh, organize such events that have to do with movement and learning oh. Wow, that's amazing. That's brilliant. And um, the yeah, the Tesla convention. I is this the first time for something so kinesthetic and uh, different to be presented for Tesla? Uh, we will see how it goes uh, uh, because we we still we are still discussing with Nick what uh, we yes. are going to do with the activities and everything and uh, if we need more space. So we will see how it goes, and we will advertise it, of course, on the internet and everywhere. Okay, I can't wait to hear more. Um, so let me see. Yeah, Theodora, how has fitness helped you as a teacher um, from the time you began to take uh, fitness into your daily life and routine? Do you think it has changed you as a teacher and as a person and that you can bring different things into your own lessons? Well, yes, because I am a person that cannot sit, uh, sit still. Uh, whenever I am, I have to sit in the desk. I always, you know, move things, uh, take off my back. Uh, with uh, this, with the, the activities, and not only the movement activities we do with Nick, but also pantomime dancing, uh, you know, rhythm, uh, I, can, um, I can express myself more easily. And that's how it changed me, combining all this. Yeah, so you're a teacher who understands students' needs more because many of us are just happy to sit there and we can't understand this need of students to move, but you feel it yourself, so yes. you're completely in tune with them. Yes. And do you think that most students enjoy it, whatever different learning styles or personalities they have, that most students um, get something from it? Yes, they do enjoy it because they do have fun. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a game, it's nothing serious, and you don't have to be sporty to move around in the classroom. No, no. Okay. Uh, um, I'm just checking because I had a lot of questions. Um, yes, okay, I have one more question, and both of you can answer this. In, from your own different perspectives, Theodora can answer as a teacher, and Nick can answer as a fitness professional. So, um, can you tell me how kinesthetic learning is brain friendly? Now, Nick mentioned how it's good for the brain. Can you tell me in your own way also, Theodore, for teachers who are watching, 
because they might want to um, hear more about the learning potential. Well, um, let me tell you about the chemicals the brain releases. Well, I'm not an expert, but I have read something. Uh, well, yeah. there are some happy chemicals that the brain releases when we're having fun. And these are dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, yeah. and endorphin. So, when the brain uh, releases these chemicals, the body uh, seeks to release them again. So, if we are having fun in learning, the body wants to have these chemicals again, so the body wants to learn. That's why That's it's brain friendly. <laughs> yes, so it's, we can't just say happy children learn better, it's a scientific fact. And the way you said um, the body wants to experience it again, it means that children can come back to class with the expectation that they're yes. going to have fun, and then they're primed and tuned in, ready to have fun. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the opposite, where they're sleepy heads and they're expecting boredom. Okay, yes. Nick, how do you describe it from your point of view? Well, it's, uh, I think what Dora said uh, completely covers it. Uh, I think, in a way, you are priming, uh, you're priming the brain. Uh, uh, like in exercise, when you, before you exercise, you have to, to warm up. I think we're kind of trying to do the same thing. Before you learn, you need to warm up the the most essential uh, thing in the body that is going to take in all the all the knowledge and information, and that's the brain. So if you yeah. if you move a bit um, with purpose, then you are warming up, you're priming in the brain, and I think uh, in in that way you will be able to um, to suck in uh, all, all the information that is that is there in front of you. Yes, and I think it's a different kind of discipline because the students are training their bodies to follow the instructions and it's a mind and body discipline and focus aspect. Um, also, Theodora, do you think this can help with memory as well because maybe they're more likely to remember their lessons when they have these unique elements involved? I, I will tell what you something. You uh, I will tell you something from Confucius. Uh, it is going around. Uh, on the internet and everywhere. Uh, it says, uh, the quote says, I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, yeah. I do and I understand. Exactly. Okay, that's perfect. So, um, I, this is great and I'm go we can share this, of course, all of the social networks, but I'm going to add it to my blog and article because I'm going to add a little fitness lesson plan as well for my aerobics. Uh, we can't, we can't wait. for beginners. <laughs> anyway, um, so you've got it all planned then. I hope that you'll go forward with TESOL and go to the convention. And we'll see whenever I can manage to fly up and actually meet you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, Bye. you too. Thank Bye. you, you too.